Hello guys, good evening and uh, welcome back to our weather analysis. This is our weekend edition brought to you by Typhoon 2000 in partnership with Nara College Foundation, Aboitis Power, Bank of the Philippine Islands and Avenue Plaza Hotel. And this is for today, Saturday to Monday, May 13th to 15th, 2023. Let's uh, proceed with our update. Here's the latest graph set for today, Saturday through Monday. This is a 48-hour graphical satellite analysis. The Philippine Islands right now are free from any uh, major weather system. So there's nothing in sight except for the usual isolated rain showers and thunderstorms in some areas of the country. And uh, also outside the park, we don't have any low-pressure areas of this time, just a near equatorial trough and uh, shear line to the north of Guam. Up north, along Taiwan, China, we have a uh, high pressure center here, doing some foggy conditions, cloudy skies, and some showers here. We have two subtropical low pressure systems moving across Japan, which will bring some rains and thunderstorms, as well as over the southern islands of Japan, Okinawa included. And uh, we have here a uh, another low pressure system. This could be developing into another subtropical low. It's not tropical low, okay? Those uh, low pressure areas developing near the equator. So this will just pass across the northern portions of southern China towards Taiwan within the next couple of days. So uh, let's enjoy this. Uh, uh, good weather, uh, although it's hot in the afternoon because of uh, the hot dry season that we are in. And don't forget to drink lots of water, lots of fluids to counteract okay, uh, against these uh, warm temperatures which in which the heat index are reaching as high as 40 up to 50 degrees centigrade. Now, uh, here's the fast animation. You can clearly see here how good the weather is across the country, except for some isolated scattered rain showers and thunderstorms in the afternoon to evening. And uh, if we uh, take a look at the zoom in satellite animation, there's nothing to uh, mention here. But uh, we are just uh, observing some localized thunderstorms across portions of northern and central Luzon. Mindanao, Western Visayas, and that's all. In the Bicol region, it's all clear all across the uh, six provinces. And uh, if we uh, take a zoom out on this satellite animation, I'm going to show you a super cyclone which has formed over the Bay of Bengal or the North Indian Ocean. This is now super cyclone uh, Mocha. Okay, so it's named uh, Mocha and it's approaching the boundary of Bangladesh and Myanmar. Right now the winds here is reaching a high of 215 kvh. I won't be surprised if this system will reach super typhoon status, but it depends on the development of the eye. Right now it's still rugged, not purely uh, cloudless. Okay, Once the eye becomes cloudless and sharp, okay, it will uh, uh, be upgraded into a uh, catastrophic cyclone. So uh, please take all necessary precautions here across uh, the uh, coastal waters of Bangladesh down to Myanmar for possible storm surge and uh, high winds plus heavy rainfall that could generate some risk of hazards from flooding, landslides, storm surges, as well as uh, wind damage okay so please take on as precautions now we are still safe here in the philippine islands but i'm going to sh show to you that between june between may 20 onwards probably may 20 to 27 we might be witnessing a new tropical cyclone forming here to the south east of guam so this is an area of interest in the next uh, five days so we are going to observe that as we move forward then later on we are going to discuss to you the latest El Nino watch okay so as you can see we are moving into a weak moderate or strong El Nino come uh, come October November through uh, early next year 
and we are going to give you the very latest on that one. But first, here's the uh, forecast for the next three days until Monday. This is the wind and pressure forecast for the next three days. By tomorrow, Sunday afternoon, we expect some variable winds across the Philippine Islands come to variable and we have some light westerly winds as enhanced by the uh, developing subtropical low east of uh, Hainan. So this is the system that will go to that direction. So it will uh, trigger some westerly winds across the western seaboards of the Philippine Islands. Okay, And uh, Monday afternoon, that LPA will now move to the west of uh, Batanes, approaching uh, Taiwan and Batanes area. So we are still uh, monitoring this if it could become a tropical low or a subtropical low. So there's a difference between that. Okay, so let's watch out for that system. But here in the Philippine Islands, it remains calm with light winds in various directions. So that's the uh, latest from the three day forecast. Now let's move to show to you come May 20th. So this is May 20th. There is a possibility of a low pressure area forming south of Guam and eventually May 21 to May 22. It could become a tropical depression. And uh, also, if we go back to May 20, let's take a look at the American model. There you go, tropical depression, Sunday, tropical storm, and on Monday, May 22. So that, that's between uh, May 20, 21, and 22, okay? That's not yet next week, so next, next week. And then we have uh, on uh, May 22, Monday, the American model suggests it could become a severe tropical storm or a typhoon. So, it's either way, let's go back to the European model. So, there you go, just a low pressure system. But both of these models are uh, conservative. So, there's a strong possibility that this system could become a tropical cyclone, a depression, or a tropical storm. So, watch out for that. And uh, based on the uh, 10 to 14 day forecast, the window of tracking is somewhere here. So this area is the possible path of this potential storm between May 20 to 27. And uh, that forecast remains less than 10%. So there will be many changes in the forecast track. When we approach uh, May 20 to 27, uh, that's during the third week of May. So we will give you the very latest on that when we approach June, when we approach the 28th of May. Now for the rainfall accumulation for the next three days, most of the rainfall are concentrated over the uh, central and southern portions of Mindanao. Those are scattered to isolated rain showers and thunderstorms as well as here over northern and central Luzon becoming more intense here over Batanes and Babuyan Kuba Islands because of the passage of the uh, possible subtropical or tropical low. So we are going to uh, observe that as well. The rest of the archipelago will remain dry, warm with increasing uh, heat index of 40 up to 50 degrees centigrade. So there you go, that's the uh, latest from our different uh, model output. Here's now the uh, latest on the El Nino from the Climate Prediction Center of NOAA, issued last May 11, and it's still under El Nino watch. And the synopsis shows that we are going to transition from a uh, ENSO neutral or normal conditions in the next couple of months, with a greater than 90% chance of El Nino persisting into the Northern Hemisphere winter that will be uh, December until February, so watch out for more updates on that uh, situation. Now, based on what strength this El Nino will be, now based on the analysis here, it says it could be uh, a weak El Nino, so the probability here is so high, but 
there are some uh, ranges of uh, or range of possibilities by the end of the year between November and January. This include an 80%, okay, 80% chance of at least moderate El Nino, or 55% chance of becoming a strong El Nino. So that's it. So we still don't know between the two, and we are going to uh, monitor the. Uh, Pacific Ocean for possible changes in the El Nino forecast. However, there's still a 5 to 10 percent chance that this forecast will not push through, so we are going to wait and see. So, what will happen in the next couple of uh, months? So here we go. Here's the graph. I'll show it to you. This is the latest one issued by uh, this May, okay, May 11. So right now, April, May, June time frame, we are at 62% neutral and 37% uh, El Nino. And when we enter May, June, July and uh, or June, July, August, El Nino will shoot up to 80%. So this is now the time that El Nino will start. Let me change this. This is now the time that El Nino will start to develop here. And then here, sorry, my, this part of the graph that will be, uh, let me check it. October until January or February, that is the time that we are going to feel the effects of the El Nino. So during the first four months, this is just the development of, uh, I mean, the developing phase of the El Nino. But uh, we are still on the neutral condition, so the southwest monsoon will kick in during this month, and then slowly every month until January or February next year, we are uh, going to experience this El Nino phenomenon. So what will be the effects? Let me show it to you. This will be the effects of El Nino and both El Nino and La Nina, the effects is, uh, the effects are on the rainfall, uh, the amount of rainfall, okay? If during La Nina, the amount of rainfall is above average, while during El Nino, it will be below average. There's nothing to do with the temperature here, although if you have below average rainfall, the heat is more higher compared to La Nina, wherein there is more rainfall. So the effects across Asia, including the Philippine Islands, Indonesia, Malaysia, Thailand, Australia. So uh, we are we are focusing ourselves here in the Philippine Islands, and it shows here that between July to April, uh, the rainfall will be below normal. So we we are, we are going to experience more dry conditions. Okay. While uh, over southern China, Japan, Taiwan, they will uh, be having some wet uh, conditions or above average rainfall between November and February. And also here across the United States, more rainfall here. Okay, so uh, that's the effects. Now the threat over Australia is the wildfires. So this is very uh, critical. So uh, please take all necessary precautions, uh, folks down there in uh, Australia, New Zealand, for possible threat of uh, wildfires or bushfires when they reach the summer season that will be between November to uh, March 2023 to 2024. November 2023 to March 2024. Okay, and when it comes to uh, tropical cyc cyclone formation or typhoons forming over the Western Pacific, as you can see here, the above average rainfall is along the middle of the Western Pacific. Actually, it's more to the east of the Western Pacific and along the east, uh, along the western part of the Central Pacific, and along the Central Pacific and this will be the tropical cyclone genesis during El Nino. So most of them, they, if they develop here, it will tend to become uh, a super typhoon, especially if it 
rapidly intensify so let's hope and pray all of them will just go to this direction okay but the problem is if one of them moved towards the philippine islands so we'll wait and see and let's hope that the uh, el nino is not um, is not that strong to trigger more super typhoons but uh, that's the history behind whenever we have strong el nino super typhoon tends to i mean the frequency of super typhoon tends to increase up to uh, an average of eight per eight super typhoons during uh, an El Nino season okay so there you go that's the latest on uh, the uh, weather situation across the Philippine Islands and for the update on the El Nino phenomenon which is expected to affect our country and other parts of the globe beginning uh, uh, autumn or October until early next year probably February to May 2024. So we will return again next week, probably on Monday, to give you more updates on the weather. This is Mike Padua saying uh, good night to all. Thank you so much for watching. Happy weekend and God bless.